Now, like I, like we just said, because that makes perfect sense. You don't know where your art can go. You just hope to inspire through your vision. Yeah, absolutely. Visionary. Yeah. Okay, okay. I, I'm seeing a theme, man. I'm okay. seeing a theme. We're seeing a theme right now. So, I don't want to go into your specific books yet. Mm -hmm. I still want to talk about the culmination of your art. Okay. Because, like I always bring this up in my interviews. If you're a fan of Heritage Hip Hop, you should know this. Nina Simone says the artist's responsibility is to reflect the times that they live in. Mm -hmm. And in understanding that, when you're a person of color or a melanated person, mm -hmm. too many of us make something that has to do with pain and not bring out the pain in order to entertain. Mm -hmm. How is walking that line when it comes to your creativity? Like what do you mean? Like 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 everybody like every brown person can talk the story can put out a racism story. Oh yeah, we can all do that. Yeah, well, I mean, originally, man, when I was doing um, manifesto before, like it became manifesto, I had the idea of doing a story like with like a crooked cop, but there was no real like story in it. It would have just been just bad thing after bad thing, you know. So I kind of took that out of the. Of, of the concept of manifesto, so when I went into it, it does have like little racism here and there. Like he does, he does say like you know little racist things. You know, calls someone a spick, talks about some you know about black people and different things. But I mean, it doesn't reflect my actual you know thoughts of it. But I try not to. I try not to input it so much. Like you know, if it's something like too negative, I won't put it in. But I don't really, I don't, I, I don't really think about it in, in the terms of walking the line. You know what I mean? Like, whatever I write is usually what goes into the, into the books itself. You know? Okay. So since we're talking about manifesto so heavy, okay. why don't you just tell them about manifesto so we can get to some deeper questions? All right, cool. Well, manifesto is the story of a police officer named Greg Wolfman who goes rogue. Wolf, by the way. Yes, yeah, very Wolfman, interesting. Yeah. He goes rogue because he took down a, a murderous drug cartel. His family was murdered in the process, and you know now he's out for blood. A lot of people often compare it to uh, the Punisher War Journal, but okay. um, we like to say it's Punisher on steroids. Okay. Yeah, so we like you know throw that little jab out there, but. Yeah. But see, here's the thing about what the original question was and manifesto. When we say how art is a reflection or imitation of life, mm -hmm. when it comes to police in this era of America, yeah. we see a lot of people have a lot of hatred towards the police. Mm -hmm. And we see a lot of police doing dastardly acts. Yeah. And we don't understand the reasoning, though we put race as a form of conditioning, which people want to say it is placed in. Yeah. While writing a comic book about a crooked cop, uh -huh. tragedy is what made him go to the steps in which he went, went through. Absolutely. How does tragedy and mental health affect people in a way where their lives are the culmination of an outset of events? How do you think? How do I think about that? Yeah, because I mean, you wrote about it. I mean, yeah, I did write about it. Um, when it comes to like mental health, I mean, yeah, I mean, everybody goes through things, you know. It, it's usually, man, with most people, everybody goes through depression, everybody goes through hard times, everybody goes through dark periods. Nobody is excused from that. No matter your color, no matter if you're a cop, a president, no matter financial. You know, I always heard, like, musicians, man, you, like, you see, like, your favorite musicians that have died, you know, or have overdosed, and, you know, you think about it, it's because everybody's trying to, like, it's, it all has to do with happiness. I realize, and happiness is a is a really big thing. And you know, if my fa I would say it, like if my family got murdered, you know, God forbid, you know, I would be the same way. You know, I would probably snap too if it was somebody that did it, and if it was somebody I know that did it, you know, that would that would make it even thing. You know, especially if it's people that you work with, and you know, and then you think about it, like in Wolfman's case, like. He did a good deed, you know. He took down a drug cartel, and then you know, in the part, in the, in, you know, the karma for for him doing that was his family, you know. And I even, but even still, with that, that's all a matter of perspective. 
Mm-hmm. And that was the key to me when to ask you questions about Manifesto. Because Manifesto is not a book about a cop. It's a book about perspective. Yeah. And that's what makes it so dope. Because I'm yeah. a mental person. I like yeah. it. I don't mean I'm crazy, man. Yeah. It means I like to look at all the aspects of the story yeah. before I give my opinion. Yeah. And everybody talks about, like I said, back to the main two. We got Batman, which is a story about mental health. Yeah. The whole thing is, people say Batman's power comes from white privilege where it doesn't. <laughs> it comes with mental health. Yeah. Is he mentally stable? Because if you notice, none of his villains go to jail. <laughs> they go to a mentalist yeah, like Yeah, they always, yeah. That is interesting. I, I've never thought about it that way. But in Manifesto, yeah. the mental health issue is coping, culpability, and responsibility. Yeah. So. Which is all the things that, that he does, like, he knows what he's doing. Mm-hmm. Brett Wolfman, he knows exactly what he's doing. He knows that there's only... There, he knows how it's gonna end, you know, basically. It's not, you know, it's gonna be, you know, his motivation isn't, it's just revenge, you know, he's not even, he knows, it's, 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 it is interesting that, that you pointed that out. Nobody's really pointed that out, that, that, that part out in, in like previous interviews and stuff. Because <laughs> they don't really got me on my toes, man, because that's really like something to think about, like, it's like, wow, yeah. Yeah, yeah. It, it, it's a very I, like I said. That's what makes me like the book so much because now you're showing me even in your as a creator, you don't know how serious what you did was. Yeah, that's a very good book, <laughs> man. I like Manifesto a lot. You know what? Like nobody's really. I think what it is too is that people have just been like, "Yo, I like it. Yo, you killed it." But nobody's told me why, and that's what you're doing. Yeah. Right now. So like me, and this is like me, like kind of like the reason why I'm like. Maybe you it comes off maybe a little like I'm caught off guard a little bit, mm-hmm. or not knowing how to answer these questions is because these are different questions that I've never had, haven't had to feel before. Well, you welcome know? to Heritage Hip Hop. Absolutely, because that's yeah. what we do. And that's dope. And that's dope. <laughs> you know what I'm saying, yeah. Dope. Like I said, we don't want to be the the who was your favorite character and what's your favorite food. No, yeah, exactly. we want to know about the mind of the creator. Absolutely. Because when people buy these books after seeing this interview, yeah. we want them. We want you to show the interview, of course, but we want them to peak, we want to pique their interest in your creative creativity. Absolutely. But there's one character in the book. Didn't you write about? Is that the book with the little girl? Or is that home? That's home. Okay, so I'll, we'll, we'll take home off for the um for the next part. Yeah. But. The one thing about Manifesto is Wolfman being the star is not, like I said, he's not the culpable character. Yeah. It's responsibility, uh, culpability, all those things, the illities. Yeah. <laughs> that has to do with personal definition and yeah, refinement. Yeah, and that's where the where the character Mills comes in, the person that's after going after him. Talk about the character, please. Uh, he is a, de- a detective, Detective mm-hmm. Mills. He is the person that's assigned to bringing down Greg Wolfman and bringing him to jail and hopefully bringing him to justice. You know what's deep about those two characters though is that they fight for the same coin. They're just yeah. different sides of the coin. Yeah. I say that about the government. Whether you vote Republican or Democrat, it's still, the same still a government. It's, still, it's, it's the still same thing. thing. Not too many things change but the words that they define. Yeah. As a police officer, the de- definition, a defining characteristic is to serve Mm-hmm. and to protect. Yeah. In today's society, we question who the police are protecting and who's being served. Absolutely. What is the ultimate protection this book gives when it comes to the mind and creativity of the artist, you, uh-huh. when giving a message to the reader? I mean, I gotta think of this. <laughs> I think this whole interview is just gonna be me kind of just sitting there like pensively thinking. That's then, good. Yeah. That's good. I mean, like I said, I haven't really thought about it like that. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Like to be honest, like I wrote a story that was just something that had to be created. I wrote it with no like you know guideline. I, I didn't you know I freestyled it basically. I just opened the book and just wrote it. You know. So like you wrote from the, your spirit. Yeah, I wrote yeah. it from the spirit. That's yeah. dope. Yeah. So it wasn't something that like I sat there and was like, let me research mental health and let me, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. That's why it's like, like I said, like the questions you're asking, they're great questions and they're dope questions, and I can't answer them because that's not what I wrote the story just to. I had a story and I wrote it. You know what I mean? Well, it see, wasn't that, something. That's it wasn't something that. Better, though. You know, I read things like I was inspired like. I was inspired by the Christopher Dorner. Okay. The killing. 
Okay. You know what I'm saying? Talk and, about it. And they killed that guy on TV, and then they tried to say they didn't kill him on TV, but uh -huh. they did what they did in Waco, Texas. They burnt him alive. You right. know what I mean? Well, see, that's what makes the story actually better yeah. because now that you have this conversation uh -huh. and you get a fan's perspective, absolutely. Now yeah. it's like, hmm, let me look at that. And then maybe that fleshes another part of the story out that you didn't think about, or maybe heightens a part of the story that you thought about. Yeah. So I I will say thank you for letting me have this conversation with you. Yeah. Because yeah. I could only appreciate the story as it goes along. Yeah. And every time you bring out a book, you know, I'm buying it. Yeah. All absolutely. right. So we got that out the way.